Hey everybody, Thomas here. Very exciting video today. Um, we have some more blades to test. So I'll show you this real quick. From Southeast Metals, they sent us up some blades to test. There's six blades in here. There's actually three different types. So there will be potentially three different videos that we're gonna do on the testing of these blades. One of the blades is a top secret blade that uh, once we figure out uh, how she performs and the cost, once they figure out the cost, I think everyone's going to really like that blade. Another one is a uh, Casco blade. Another one is a Ripper S type blade. So we have three different types of blades in here. Let's go ahead and open it up. All right. Now we're going to talk a little about one of these. Let's go ahead and try off the. I think this video we're going to focus on this ripper blade right here. So, yeah, let's let's focus on a ripper blade. I know a lot of people run a ripper blade. I've never run one. Let's see how she is, and then we'll try the the Costco one or Casco one, excuse me, and then we'll do the top secret blade. This blade right here. First things first, look at that color different, like difference there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm excited about running these. <laughs> All right. So today we're gonna run the ripper blades. Let me go ahead and get this onto the mill. We're gonna do some cutting. Stay tuned. Okay, folks, we've got the new blade on there. This is the Ripper S blade, and I'll show you. But I have not run this trip anything. You can see they got the uh, the markings on the blade, so she has not been run at all. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing like we do with the Kinsaw blade. We're gonna see how much board footage and how much surface area the blade has traveled through until the blade is what I deem is dull. Now the wood we have here is red oak. This is comparable in hardness to that of the ash that we had before. And I have a number of logs. I have six of these red oak logs set aside. You can see them over there kind of behind the canoe. I've got two more there and a couple more behind there. But we have three blades to test. In total, I have 42 of these red oak logs. They're all, uh, again, pretty much the same type of quality as what the ash logs we were cutting in hopes to try to keep this as fair and balanced across the board because we don't want to be cutting a whole lot of softwood. We want to make sure we're cutting something that's comparable for all blades. So we're cutting hardwood and I think hardwood's a good, you know, uh, wood to, to go off of and, and especially ones about the same hardness. You see there's a little bit of snow on the log. The log is not frozen. That's just where the snow is sitting on the log. The temperatures today uh, are about the same as when I was cutting the ash logs. Um, this morning I think it was 29 degrees and I think the morning I was cutting the ash low was 29 degrees. Now the average temperature of the past couple days has been cooler. However, uh, we've also been warming up to about the same temperature. So between the 20s and 40s is what we've been having and that was comparable to what we were having when we cut the ash log. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and start off with this. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put on a time lapse here and note the exhaust of the sawdust coming off. We're going to be looking for a steady stream of sawdust. We don't want to see uh, a lot of particulate fo matter floating off. Now, you might see a lot of stuff floating off only because it's blowing about 10, 15 miles an hour, but that's all right. I think uh, we should still get a very solid stream out there. The only difference that I can see currently in my setup from when I was cutting the ash is I'm not running water on my blade. I'm actually running a diesel drip. Um, I don't really think it's going to play much into it. Uh, but uh, just putting it out there so we know all information going into this test before we start. So without further ado, let me go and throw in a time lapse and we're going to go ahead and cut this up. The goal on this, I'll be cutting a lot of one by material as well as some two by materials. And we're going to show, again, what is the board footage cut up as well as what is the square footage the blade has gone through. Square footage would account for one inch material by two inch material. So, uh, what I'm trying to say is the square footage is going to be the more accurate baseline to go off of between all these tests because I'm not going to be cutting the same amount of wood each time, aka the same order, 
um, but we will we will note we already know what the the square footage the blade travel did last time was we'll calculate this one as well but I'll give you both numbers Wow, folks, I'll say that blade rips through that wood. I don't know how else to say that. I know it sounds kind of corny, but it ripped the blades. It ripped through the wood. Uh, 26 one by 6 red oaks uh, boards here. Let's look at some of the cut quality. Let's go a few, few pieces into it. Let's try this one right here. Cut quality looks pretty good. Looking at the actual blade, I mean, I didn't see any movement on that blade. Again, there are 26 of these. The time lapse said 16 minutes. So 16 minutes to take a log from full form to this is not too shabby. Uh, I'll run some numbers on the board on the screen to show the number of board footage in this, but this is quite a bit of board footage uh, to cut in 16 minutes. And uh, the blade just sounds good when you're cutting. It sounds a bit aggressive. I mean, you could hear those teeth ripping that wood out and everything, but man, it it was cutting great. There's a solid stream of sawdust coming off. The sawdust that's here, it's, you know, it's all evenly sized. And uh, yeah, I'm impressed thus far. Cut quality looks great. The sound was great and uh, yeah, I, I thought I was cutting at a great speed. I was cutting uh, at a comfortable speed that I felt like I wasn't pushing the machine very hard and it just, they cut great, so. Okay, now we're on to log number two. I wanna go ahead and do my first couple cuts or anything live so you can kinda hear how this blade's cutting. Then we'll switch back to a time lapse.
spoke. So as you saw, I handled that very well. But some of y'all might be wondering, why is he cutting so deep? Well, the reason I'm cutting so deep is because I need good clean boards. I'm trying to maximize my blade life. So as you see, each of my cuts, I've cut down deep enough where there's no uh, live edge remaining on there. I need good clean stuff. And also if I continue to run through this bark right here, it's just gonna continue to eat up my blade because there's sand, dirt, debris, whatever in there. And to try to show the most accurate testing I can the blade, we don't want that to impact uh, what we're actually cutting. Now I'm cutting this for myself. I'm doing a wood accent wall down in the basement. And right now, to give you a size comparison, this right here, this is a 14 and three quarter by 14 and 1 16th inch pant. That's Big Mama Jamba. And with this red oak here, uh, it just looks absolutely beautiful. I'm very anxious to see how this turns out. Now on the other side, I have the big check running, well heck, I don't remember what orientation is right now. I think it's running this way, but it could be running this way. Anyways, I've got a solid check across here. I'm gonna do some thinking to make sure I, I put my cut in the right place. But I'm going to have some boards separate on me. That's kind of a fact of life. But all in all, I should be able to get the same number. I should be able to get uh, 26 uh, one by sixes out of this. So this will be another 109-ish board foot. And as you see, cutting through it like a champ. Stay tuned. Let me throw on the hyperlapse. Folks, this is a new one for me. The section of log actually detached from the camp, and that was actually where it had fallen and it had split. It didn't hurt anything, I stopped it pretty quick. So I'm gonna go and take that off and continue cutting. Again, that's a new one for me, but where the tree had fallen, 
I guess uh, that section was already free and it just came off. It didn't really hurt anything. You can see the blade did rise up a little bit, but that's actually when this was on there, the weight of that. So I think we're still safe. I'm glad the blade did not come off, so that's a big win. I'm gonna see if I can remove that top section and then we'll go ahead and uh, continue cutting. These are some one by fours that I need for my actual structure here. that top section is secured so we're gonna go ahead and keep on cutting uh, but again that is the first for me I've never had a section of log detach that's uh, that's a new one <laughs> all right let's get back to that uh, uh, cutting there hyperlapse Well, folks, I'm very impressed thus far. I think there's still plenty of life left in this, this blade here. But just to give you a rundown of where we are thus far, this is a 109.5 board foot. These are two separate widths here. So this stack right here is 73.6 board foot. This is 63.8 board foot. This double stack right here is 101 board foot. And this double stack right here is 53.6 board foot for a total of 401.5 board foot thus far on one blade and i still think there's plenty of life on there and that's not counting the off cuts that we have over here and i've got a few off cuts by the sawmill too so yeah <laughs> there because there is some inches passed through here now it is kind of calculated into here half of it is anyways um but yeah we have the log on the sawmill we've got a few more over here we're going to go through but i think this blade will in fact uh reach about 600 plus board foot i think that's what we're going to find um but again very happy with the cut quality you can see this is the first stack that was cut looks pretty good let's go to the last stack that was cut still looks pretty good so <laughs> not too shabby uh 401 board foot thus far it's all one inch dimension so that's about as accurate as you can get Let's continue on. Stick with me here. Okay, so we are up to 530 board foot of one by material. Now I had to do, so do some subtraction, subtraction, excuse me, for this piece and then the other side there. The last two logs were pretty gnarly, but uh, that's part of it. These are gonna look really great though. The grain that's in here, I mean, a lot of this is gonna be quarter sawn too, so beautiful, beautiful stuff. As you can see, seeing a little more of blade chatter going on there 
still traveling through the log at a pretty neighbor must got a deer <laughs> still traveling through the log at a pretty fast pace um however i am noticing a little more sawdust drifting off and i'm also noticing uh just kind of a different sound if you will so that being said we're going to go ahead and probably cut one more log i've got one more log on there and i think we're going to turn into some two by material and then we'll reevaluate see if we want to put another big log on here so yeah we'll see i'm very very impressed thus far i like this blade it seems to be cutting very well Okay, folks, to say that I'm impressed with this blade, blade would be kind of an understatement. <laughs> I, I'm blown away by how this blade's performing thus far. I just checked the set on it. I've only lost two thousandths in set. So we started off at 22 thousandths, we're at 20 thousandths. I only checked two teeth, an up and a down tooth, but they're rear both green 20 thousandths. I'm still seeing a stream of sawdust come off that's good enough. Um, it, it definitely has gotten uh, to where it's floating off more and I can look at my sawdust pile over here and see it kind of powderizing more so there's more powder to it I like to see a little bit larger chunks than what I'm seeing currently however when I do the nail test it's still sharp um, but she is almost considered dull um, I did throw another log on here but I'm going to do something different I'm not going to cut it into one by material I'm actually just going to slab this one up and the reason I need to slab it up is because I actually have to work on a few cutting boards and a few benches. And I think based on the number of cuts I'm going to do for this, this should finish out the blade. So we're going to give her one more log. And not to prolong this video too much longer, I will do a hyperlapse until I get down to like the last two cuts. Because I want you to see... Hopefully the speed will still be good at the speed I'm cutting on this. So we're going to throw in a hyperlapse. It'll give me some time to rearrange the log in the best orientation and also to uh, you know, just clean her up before we do those final two cuts. Folks, the last cut, I'll be cutting not quite the difference between the remaining stuff here, but I'll have a two inch board and an inch and a half board on the bottom. But this will be the final cut, and you can definitely tell she is starting to show her age now. Um, but watch the steady stream of sawdust, it's still coming off. You are seeing a lot more float off, um, but I'm very impressed, very impressed. Again, I've been running the blade at about 1100 to 1200 PSI all day long. Uh, run time on the blade, 
Sounds like someone else got a deer. Uh, I guess I had about three hours with the runtime of the blade. Um, let's look at the cut quality. I didn't see really any dips or dives. But you can see there is a little more blade chatter going on here. All right, let's get the camera over here. And then I gotta do some uh, square footage calculation and convert that over to board footage. Not taking consideration the, the thickness. Again, the square footage is if everything was in one inch material, the board footage is the actual volumetric measurement of the wood. So, take a look at that. Cut quality is still great, but you are starting to see a little more of that, that tooth chatter. Um, especially in these knot sections here. There's no dipping or diving going on. Yeah. Pretty stuff here though. Almost all that quarter sawn grain there. And let's see if we can get this last one over. All right, our last one here. Again, not really feeling any rises or dips or dies. Did very well. Let's do the fingernail test on the blade. You know, I actually have to come up with a better way of determining when a blade is dull, but I will say this does work. So I'm not getting any scraping of the fingernail. So I'm gonna say that blade's dull. She, I mean, it does have some sharpness to it, but again, it's not removing material off my fingernail. So I'm gonna say it's dull. If you look, let's see if I get the focus right. Nope, it ain't gonna focus on me. Anyways. Looking at the blade, there is still a visible set. Like I said, we just measured before cutting this log, and we were at 20 thousandths on this set. Impressive. Impressive. All right, let me load this over, get this over to the uh, the pile, and we'll come up with a square footage. I also have to account for this 2x14 here, and then this pile of stuff here. So let me run some numbers here and figure out what we come up with. Stay tuned. Okay, folks, there you have it. I'm pretty impressed with this. So we're not counting all this right here. This is just off cuts and everything. That'll be turned into firewood and everything. But that does not play into the calculation. The only thing that plays in the calculation is from this over. And it's pretty impressive. There's a lot of one by material there. Some that's going to be for a wall down in our basement. Some that's going to be with the one by fours for the extension that I'm adding on to uh, my building there. I need some uh, lathing boards. And then some of these are going to be for charcuterie boards. Um, benches, stuff like that. And then there's just some really weird off cuts. All right. I did all the calculations and it's pretty impressive. Just in that stack alone, only counting the one by stuff, not the inch and a half stuff there at the yeah. end, you're at 530 board foot. So that in and of itself is impressive. But if you run the full numbers, the board footage amount is 732.5 board foot for everything that we cut here. The square footage amount, which is essentially taking consideration only the surface area that you're cutting and not the thickness or not the volume of the wood, is 639.5 square feet. So 639.5 square foot worth of running the blade through the wood is a lot for one blade. That's one blade that ran for about three hours as per the hour meter on the sawmill. Um... I was taking some breaks and everything. I did have it running back and forth. But that was based on the hour meters. Three hours of run time. 639.5 square foot. So if I had cut all this material into one by, that's how much I uh, would cut up. The actual board footage was 732.5. But very impressive. Very impressed with those Ripper S blades. First time I've ever run them. And I'm not going to lie. That's a pretty dang good blade. It, and the cut quality... As you can see, this was the last 
last board cut. So you can see a little bit of saw marks there. Now let's go to the first one cut. This is the first log right here cut. And let's flip it over. So, yeah, not too shabby. Cut quality still remained good, even up to the last log. So, hope you found this video somewhat uh, informational for you. Um, this is definitely a blade that I consider a very good blade. I have used the Kennesaw blades. Kennesaw blades, similar type performance, a little bit less, um, but not much. Um, so we've got two more blade types to test from Southeast Metals. And again, what I'm trying to do is create a database doing all these different blades, figuring out how long they last. We're going to compile all that stuff into an Excel spreadsheet, and then we're going to get down to what you really want to know. What's the best bang for your buck? So we're going to say, okay, here's a blade. Here's how long it ran for. Here's a price as of this date. You know, prices are subject to change and everything, but I think that information right there will give you an idea. Hey, based on how long the blade lasts and how inexpensive it is, what's the most efficient or economical blade for you? So again, please like, subscribe. If you like these videos, please let me know. But uh, trying to keep this as fair and balanced as possible. And uh, I really enjoy doing this. And the good thing is, is I actually have some decent logs to do this with. So the hardness of the red oak is comparable to the hardness of the uh, ash that I cut last time. I'm trying to keep them all about the same. I can do some numbers and everything to figure out if there's any difference really between the two. But for the most part, that's a pretty fair comparison. All right, we'll see you around. Thanks.